uh, continuity. As in the case of bamboo, you will find section, section, section coming up, coming up. So the word vansha became the word for the concept of tradition or parampara. Now we come to the third chapter of this Bhrataranika Upanishad, which I introduced last time, that it contains a beautiful story first, and that makes the teaching much more palatable when a story is told, and also a very humorous story. And the story refers to two great personalities, Janaka, the Emperor of Videha, Northern Bihar, and Yajnavalkya, a great sage dominating the Upanishads. These two meet together. That is how the story begins. Shankara says here, in this chapter, you will get rational arguments to show the unity of the self. Previously it was the Shruti, the experience of the sages. Now a little more of rational discussion comes in this section. Then he says here, Shankara's commentary, introducing this chapter, when both scriptural evidence and argument start to demonstrate the unity of the self, they can show it as clearly as a fruit on the palm of one's hand, as clearly as that. For it has been said, the self should be heard and reflected on. Atma va re, Mantabhya, that is the statement. Therefore, it is test, the test to test the meaning of the Shrutis in the light of logic and reason or arguments that this portion relating to Yajnavalkya, which is mainly argumentative or rational in presentation, is commenced. That is the beginning of this third chapter in Shankara's words. Now we begin the text itself. First, Om. Janako ho vaide ho bahu dakshinena yachnena ye je. Janaka of Videha, the king of Videha or emperor of Videha, he performed a sacrifice in which he gave much money by way of gifts to people. That is the first statement. Tatraha urupanchala nam brahmana abhisema sameta babu ho. There are so many learned people called Brahmanas at that time called learned people. Those who had time for education and never ran after making money, etc. They were the Brahmanas considered to be very much interested in intellectual and spiritual development. So many Brahmanas assembled there from Kurupanchala area. Now Kurupanchala is the most important area of our cultural history. Namely, area in Lucknow, round about that area, Panchalas, northern and southern UP, and the other is area around about Delhi up to Jalandhar, Punjab, etc. That's called Kuru Panchara, the Kurukshetra as well as Jalandhar, all this part of the Kuru area. This is Panchala area. The whole Mahabharata is known as a Kuru Panchala war, war between Gurus and the Panchalas. The Drona, the Duryodhana and others, Kauravas, they were of the Kuru race. And Panjali's father was the king of Panchala, and yes, his son also was a great fighter on the Pandava side. So you can see the Kuru Panchala war in the Mahabharata. That area was gifted to great intellects. Even after Buddha's time, that area became a great center of Buddhistic scholarship, Buddhistic learning, even up to the frontier, up to Afghanistan at that time. So here, the great Brahmanas, Shankara refers to in the commentary, that area is well known for the protection of great scholars. Shankara says, Guru Panchala Nam, Tatraha, Guru Panchala Nam, Brahmana, Abhi, Sameta, Babu, Ho, they assembled there at that time. Tasyaha, Janakasya, Vaidehasya, Vijitnyasa, Babu, Va, Janaka, Abhideha, had a curiosity. He wanted to understand something. What is that? Ka Svideshaam, Brahmanana, Anuchanatama Iti. Who among these Brahmanas is the most learned, is the most developed intellect among all this? Janaka had a curiosity to find out this truth. 
so he collected all of them. And not only that, he provided great attraction to them to come from far and near. What is that attraction? It is Saha Gavam, Sahasram, Avirodha. He collected a thousand cows and kept them in a pen near the assembly. And not only mere cows, they Desha Desha Pada, Eka Gasya, Go Abadha Bhuhu. On the horns of every cow, he had tied also gold of this ten padas each. Ten pada will be half a pound, it comes to practically, on both the things together. So that each cow had so much of gold tied, so that the Brahmana can get the cow and the gold. The Hasti Hiranyam. Hasti is elephant, Hiranyam. Otherwise, go Hiranyam, cow and gold. That is the way wealth was considered at that time. Hasti or cow, these are all great wealth at that time. So here it is, cow and gold. That is how he wanted to attract people. I'll give you plenty of gifts. And he was known for his generosity. In the last chapter we saw the king, another king, competing with Janaka. People say, Janaka, Janaka, I am also capable of doing it. I am also going to give donation to people. So he also called a meeting. We studied it in the second chapter. Now this is the third chapter. Real Janaka, who is known as a great philosopher, a Brahmajani, and a great worker, administrator, ruling a great kingdom. That is the story of Janaka in the Upanishads. Janaka in the Ramayana, we get as the father of Sita. That story is there. We don't know whether they are one and the same. Videha, Videha, the Videha Jaya is there, practically northern Mithila area, northern Bihar. So Janaka, the emperor of Videha, he formed this kind of an assembly to test who is the greatest scholar, greatest intellectual giant in the country at that time. You see what an amount of intellectual interest you see in that kind of time. Nearly 4,000 years ago, people traveling. 500 miles to go and hear these discussions, take part in it. How many hundreds must have gone at that time? So that is the intellectual, spiritual ferment out of which came this great literature known as the Upanishads, which affected part of India. Like as I said, Punjab, Delhi area, part of most of the UP, part of Bihar, a part of little Madhya Pradesh also. That was the area where this ferment took place, intellectual as well as spiritual, the result of which is this immortal literature, the Upanishads, and the immortal culture nurtured by this literature, namely Indian culture. It is this that made for the immortality of Indian culture. Some profound spiritual depth dimension came to Indian culture through the study advocated in the Upanishads. Now, this year, as they all assembled together, this Janaka had a priest, royal priest. Now the story goes. Tanhu vacha brahmana bhagavantaha yuvai brahmishtaha sayata ga eta ga udajatam iti. O brahmanas, among you, whoever is the greatest scholar, let him immediately take away all these cows with gold on their horns. You are free. Among you, whoever he is great scholar. The king announced it in the assembly. Teha Brahmana Dhatrishuhu, not one of them was bold enough to feel I am the greatest scholar and take away the cows. So they kept quiet. Nobody moved in the assembly. It was a very ticklish situation. But something happened. was one of them. He called his Brahmachari. You come. Swamashrava, take away all the cows. Straight away. He said, he took away. He said, Teha Brahmana na dhatrishu, 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 atha yajna valkya, sumeva brahmacharinam uvacha, eta, somya, odaja, samashrava iti. Please take all these cows, my dear, told the disciple like this. Taho dhatrishvara. A brahmachari did the same thing. He quietly drew the cows away to his own ashrama nearby. They have Brahmana Chukrutuhu. All the Brahmanas became angry immediately. What daring! 
this man dares to take away when we are all here, like that. Deha Brahmana Chukrutuho. I don't think human nature has not changed. Even today such things happen. I plenty. Katham no Brahmishto Vediti. How do you claim that you are supreme knower of Brahman? How do you claim like that? You simply ask the cows to be taken away. So they got angry and accosted him like this. Then, yes, Katham no Brahmishto Vediti. Ataha Janakasya Vaidehasya Ota Ashvalo Babhuva. Janaka had a priest, sacrificial priest, attached to his palace by name Ashwala. Naturally, he is the royal priest, a little proud, a little arrogant. So he took up the challenge and addressed the Ajnaval Kya. Sa Hayanam Papracha. He asked the Ajnaval Kya. Tvam no Kalu no Yajnaval Kya. Brimeshtosi iti. Do you think Yajnaval Kya? That you are? the greatest knower of Brahman among all of us? That question he put to the Ajnavalkya. Brahmishto, well established in Brahman, in the knowledge of Brahman. Are you one such? That question he asked. And the Ajnavalkya says, Saho Vacha, the Ajnavalkya replied, Namo Vayam Brahmishtaya Kurmaha. Salutations to all Brahmishtas. We are interested in the cows, he said, <laughs> in the language. Namo Vayam Brahmishtaya Kurmaha. Go kama eva vayam. We are fond of the cows. So you take away whatever you like. Cows will go with me. Go kama vayam. Sma iti. Ham tata eva. Dadrum dadh. Prashtum dadhe ashwalaha. Immediately, Ashwala started questioning Yachimilke in the assembly. Now begins the discussion. And in this discussion, the first few questions all relate to technical matters of rituals that obtained in the Vedic tradition at that time. A little later only, high philosophical things come. So, just yes, we begin with Ashwala. He is questioning Yajnamalikya. Stood up. Yajnamalikya, I challenge you. Answer this question. Very ordinary questions dealing with ritual, etc. And you could easily answer because they are the master of the Vedic tradition. He said, Tamha tata eva prashtum dathre for Ashwalaha. He had the courage to stand up and ask Yajnamalikya questions. He didn't know Yajnamalikya's greatness. So he had the courage and he was also a little proud. Ashankara comments, I'm the royal priest. Naturally, he had a sense of superiority to his questions. So what is the question? Yajnamalikya te ho vacha. Ho Yajnamalikya. This is the first question and several such questions I will skip over because they are just dealing with technical details of the Vedic, what you call ritualistic ceremony, etc. Yajnamalikya said, since all this is overtaken by death, the whole universe of change, and swayed by it, by what means does the sacrificer go beyond the clutches of death? That is the one question. Through the organ of speech, through fire, which is the real priest called for through. Fire and speech, they go together. Fire God presides over human speech according to our idea. The sacrifices organ of speech is the whole through. Sacrifices. This organ of speech is fire. This fire is the whole through. This is called liberation. This is emancipation. This is the language. Shankara comments only very little on this because there is no special philosophical spiritual significance in this question or in this answer. Purely textual question. Then, after that question is over, now comes the second question again. He asked a second question. He said, all this overtaken by day and night, how does he overcome this kind of limitation and become free? Again, similar answer. Second, then third, all this goes on. So far as this is concerned, up to the next questioner. Even that also, the next questioner also, is similar, all dealing with subjects which have lost all relevance to our conditions today. How many kinds of ricks are there? How many sacrifices are there? Such questions come here. How many kinds of oblations are there? Then, so how many gods does this Brahman from the right protect the sacrifice of today? These are all purely local, temporary, contemporary, ritual questions. Then, yeah. now comes. 
a little later uh, in the first last last section of the first brahmana here Rajamalkya, he said, how many classes of hymns and Udgathurs, singers of hymns, are there in a sacrifice? Three classes, he answered. Then, which are those three classes? He answered. Thereupon, this Ashula became silent and sat down. He had nothing more to say. Whatever he asked, he answered, according to contemporary Vedic knowledge. Therefore, he kept quiet, Ashula's pride was humbled thereby. Now comes the next section, which has a little deeper meaning. Generally, in the Upanishads, you begin with very ordinary ritualistic ideas, dualistic ideas, pass through refined, more subtle ideas, finally end up in a triumphant shout of the supreme spiritual thought and realization. You can see it throughout in many of these Upanishads. So here, the second question, second questioner, is putting a more important question. Two words are used, graha and atigraha. Graha means that which catches, that which entraps, that is graha. Atigraha, that which is entrapped, these are the two. And the word graha is also the meaning, planets. They, because the planets catch the human being, they are called grahas. And so they got the meaning. They Saturn or Buddha, they catch the human being, the astrological influence, the word graha was used even for planets. And here it is philosophical. Graha, Adigraha, Shankara says in his commentary, the emancipation from death in the form of time. See the language. Death in the form of time. How to get emancipation from that? Greater, deeper, spiritual, philosophical questions are beginning here. The, the relation of the story to the subject has already been dealt with. The emancipation from death in the form of time, as well as all the rights, sacrificial rights, has been explained earlier. Now, what is this death? Emancipation from which has been explained. What is this death? It consists of grahas, organs, atigrahas, objects. See the language. Subject, object in our human system. Our sense organs are the subject. The world outside and the body are the objects. This is called graha, that is called atigraha. Yes. It is the result, liberation from this relative existence of graha, atigraha combination in which we are always there. Take for example, modern scientific thinking. The same nature, physical nature, transforms itself in the human body as flesh and blood etc. on the one side and the eye and the sense organs on the other. The sense organs are the graha and the rest of the body is atigraha. It can capture it in knowledge, in understanding, in experience. So within the body itself, grahas, atigrahas, both are there and both come from the same source, pure nature, physical nature. The food that we take will manufacture not only the bones and the flesh and the blood, but also the very delicate instrument called the eye, the eyeball and the vision and the del delicate instrument of touch and taste and hear, etc., etc. All this is graha, atigraha, existing here. So we separate the two to study what they are. Something amazing. How could a piece of matter become the knower and the known? The subject and the object. The eye is the subject and the body is the object or the world is the object. Same thing. From the same reality, you find this distinction coming of graha and atigraha. So Shankara refers to that subject here. So in this way, we come to this first question. Here is the first question. Asahayinam Jaratkara Arthabhaga Papracha. One Jaratkara Arthabhaga. He stood up. He was also a sage. His name comes also in the Mahabharata uh, Adiparva. Another sage, maybe the same or different Jaratkaru, he said. Then Arthabhaga of the line of Jaratkaru asked him this question. Yajmal Kedi Huvacha Kati Grahaha Kati Adigraha Iti How many Grahas are there? How many Adigrahas are there? The question. Ashtav Grahaha Ashtav Adigraha Iti Immediately Yajmal Kedi said Eight Grahas Eight Adigrahas are there. He said Ye Te Ashtav Grahaha Ashtav Adigraha Kathameta Iti 
बता दे विचार दे प्लीज टेक दिस क्वेश्चन राष्ट्र मन से गे नाउ दिस इज द एट ग्रहस एट अधिग्रह वट आर देन आंसर इज वन बाय वन इज कमिंग नाउ सिंपली प्राणो वै ग्रह सो अपने अतिग्रह गृहत अपने हि गंधान जिग्रति प्राण इज द ग्रह एंड अपान इज अतिग्रह प्राण ग्रास अकान अपान हाउ अपान स्टैंड फॉर गंध और स्मेल द कैपेसिटी फॉर स्मेल the no sense got to get positive to smell prana it is that grasps it in this particular form so is it prana indeed is the graha prana here means the nose not the other kind of uh, energy nose from the context it the nose is connected with air apana here means odor smell it is also called because it accompanies odor it accompanies the odor for everybody smells with the nose colors odors presented by the air that is breathed in upon this is expressed by the senses from one smells odors through the apana that is the language used at that time so graha atigraha with regard to one sense organ he has mentioned the next is the same vagvai graha speech is graha and sa namna atigrahena grihita that is caught by speech by name the name utters to capture the particular object vachahi namani abhivadati only through speech you can you can speak of the names of things naming things and classifying them the organ of speech indeed the graha the speech as confined to one particular body deals with things to which people are attached and makes utterances which are untrue pernicious rude offensive and so on we do that with our speech therefore this graha called the organ of speech is controlled by the atigraha namely name that is by whatever is uttered the long vowel atigraha is vedic license organ of speech is meant to express things that is the nature of the organ of speech to express things communication is that it is used by them for just that purpose hence it is controlled by them and there is no deliverance for it until it has done this function therefore the organ of speech is said to be controlled by the atigraha namely name for it is a fact that people impelled by their attachment to things capable of expression get into all sorts of troubles by their speech not knowing the correct method so graha atigraha with respect to speech comes there then said next is jihwa the tongue indeed is graha it is controlled by atigraha taste for one knows taste through the tongue they are also the same we are controlled by the taste by tongue getting caught up in the coil of the taste next is the eye graha and color atigraha then shotra ear is graha and atigraha is the sounds coming in through the ear and mana mind is graha and kama desire is atigraha this graha that is atigraha it is controlled by the atigraha namely desire or one wishes desires through the mind without the mind you cannot have desired expression similarly hasta griha karmanam atigrahena grihitah hands indeed are griha they are controlled by atigraha namely work one does work through the hands then twelfth the skin is griha controlled by touch atigraha so all this he went on answering one by one these are all provided in the very thinking already established just like in our elementary school science books so many things are there we answer them as question by the teacher they are all provided we are only asked to remember and give a uh, answer to it up to that this questions well drawn now yajna valke de hovacha again he addressed yajna valke yadidam sarvam mrtyor annam ka svitsa devata yasya mrtyor annam iti a little more profound question is coming now he says अग्निर्वाय मृत्यु हो सो अपाम अन्नम अप पुनर्मृत्यु जयति राज्यमर्थ्यूनिवर्सूड्यूड्यूड्यूड्यूड्यूड्यूड्यूड्यूड्यूड्यूड्यूड्यूड्यूड्यूड्यूड्यूड्यूड्यूड्यूड्यूड
and what is the death of death? Food is the death of everything. That's called death. If so, food is destroyed, everything is eaten by death itself. Everything is eaten by death. But is there a death of death? I want to know that. Very wonderful question. In one of the songs of Sri Ramakrishna, the gospel you will read, I have put sleep to sleep in the awakening of yoga. That's the language. That you can put sleep to sleep when you are truly awakened in the spiritual sense. No matter of sleep. Sleep is only because we have this body. Therefore, we have to take rest and sleep. In the awakening of jnana, there is no sleep at all. So it's called putting sleep to sleep in the awakening of yoga or jnana. So here it is, death of death. It is this particular investigation that gave a depth to our culture. No culture can achieve depth without tackling the problem of death. Death cannot come. Surface views only you will get a culture. That is the fault of Greek culture. They knew life. They didn't know death. Therefore, they were full of difficulties and easily disappeared also. And they couldn't understand a man like Socrates, such a profound person who knew this subject, death of death, he knew. He was utterly fearless of death, therefore. So they killed him because they couldn't understand that dimension of thought and experience. In India, we developed this idea, went deep into the subject of which the most important question is what you find here in the beginning. This is the beginning of that subject. Death of death. Is there such a thing as the death of death? That's the question. Just the beginning only. Deeper dimensions will come later. Yeah. Shankara says in his commentary, yes. Liberation can take place only when this form of death is destroyed. And this last would be possible if there be the death of death even. Hence, Considering the question, unanswerable, he asked, who is that God? Who is the death of all death? Yeah. Rajamalikya said, there is the death of death. How? That is the nature of this explanation. It swallows all the grahas and atigrahas. That death of death will swallow all grahas and it swallows all grahas and atigrahas. Liberation from relative existence. Atikraha and Graha constitute the world of relativity. Absolutely part of the relative world. And there is a death of that. That is such a pure philosophy and spirituality. Anything which is beyond death, which is eternity, time cannot touch it. This inquiry forms the central theme of the Upanishads. In the Mandaka Upanishad, you have the disciple asking the question, Sir Athihi, please teach me. I am your disciple. He said, Answer, the Guru answers, Two sciences are to be mastered by a human being. One is the science of these grahas and adhigrahas, this world of relativity. The other is science of the one imperishable reality. One is called ordinary science, the other is called higher science. Aparavidya, Paravidya. This is the distinction between the two. And Paravidya is defined here. Ata para yayada daksharam adhigamyate. That is Paravidya by which you realize the imperishable in the perishable. The imperishable is the deathless. Perishable is subject to death. So that is the subject that is found there in the Mundaga Upanishad. The whole theme of religion is this idea of the imperishable. God is imperishable, otherwise nobody will worship him. A perishable God, nobody will worship. So we all worship God. Is it true that he is imperishable? How do you understand it? That kind of approach, rational, initiative approach, the subject received only in India, in the Upanishads. That is what makes these Upanishads so relevant in all period of history. Even the most advanced period of intellectual life is the modern period. Even today, this is a tremendous subject. What is imperishable? What is beyond time? What is eternal? This is the language we will find again and again coming here. So Shankara says, there is, there is a death of death. Grahas, atikrahas are the fetters which can be removed. 
this world of relativity can be negated when we take our mind higher and higher. That we shall try to do. The Yajimalke's answers, these things come in. Now he says, Yajimalke te hovacha yatrayam purusho mriyate mudasmat pranaha kramantyo neti neti hovacha yajimalke ha anayiva say atrayiva samavariyante ta uchati amrai abhayati atmato mrtashyate now comes closer now. Yajimalkeya said he, when this liberated man dies, who has conquered griha and atigraha, when he dies, do his organs go up from him or do they not? All these organs, grahas, do they go up with him or do they not? No, replied Yajimalkeya. They merge in him only. Whatever energy is in these grahas, they are all merged in him only. The body swells, is inflated, and in that state lies dead. That is where the body is concerned. But he is liberated. All the energy of this Graha system has been absorbed in him. For it was from there he came, so the body lies dead there. Now comes the Shankara's commentary on this question. When after death has been swallowed by another death, death swallowing death, namely, Realization of the Supreme Self. That is the death that conquers all death. Realization of the deathless one, the immortal, what Socrates experienced. <coughs> he experienced the immortal self. The body is a death, not the self. You can do with the body as you like, he told the questioner. That realization, when it happens, this liberated man of realization dies. To his organs, such as those of speech called grihas, and the atigraha, such as name, which in the form of impressions, are in him and impel him to action, go up from him, the dying knower of Brahman, or not? That is the question. The organs and objects becoming one with the Supreme Self, attain identity with or merge in him only, their cause, the man of realization with the reality of the Supreme Brahman, like waves merging in the ocean. They belong to the ocean, they came from it, they merged back into that also. This is the concept. So this question was asked, and then he answers here, does not the man die then? You can ask the question. No, it is the body that dies. Straight comes the answer, Jengara's commentary. Does the man die? No, the body dies. That has come as a, what you call, birthright to all of us in India. Nobody has to be taught about it. The body dies. I don't die. The word body dies is what we express. Whereas in English we say, he gave up his ghost. I say, he was a body, he gave up his ghost and the body. We say the body is only secondary. You give up the body. That's called death. So he says, does not the man die then? No. It is the body that dies. For it swells. He is inflated by the external air like a pair of bellows. And in that state lies death motionless. The gist of the passage is that the liberated man, after his bondage has been destroyed, does not go anywhere. This is the language. Atraiva samamini yante will be another statement that will come later. There itself is there. Wherever he was, he is even now. But the body has come and gone. That is the nature. There is no question of going somewhere. Where is he not? He is so everywhere. That is the language Upanishad is using. This language People would not have understood in the last century. This century we can understand because we are similar, seeing similar things in nuclear physics, similar realities, which is here and everywhere. That kind of description of electron, for example, you get in nuclear physics. So a little crazy idea is able to be digested today because physics has crazy ideas, especially the principle of indeterminacy is a crazy idea in physics. Physics is concerned with causality, where indeterminacy negates all causality. So crazy ideas you get in the Atman, subject of the Atman. You get it in nuclear physics at the deeper level. Here he says here, Jatyavalke te hovacha yatrayam parusho mriyate kimenam na yahati te name te anantam vai nama ananta vishve devaha anantame vasa tena lokam jayati. Yajamalkya said he, 
when this man dies, what is it that does not leave him? That is the question. Name, Yachimakya replied. The name indeed is infinite. Infinite are the Vishwedevas. He who knows thus wins thereby verily an infinite world. That was the answer given at that time. But next question is very interesting and the answer also is equally interesting. Yachimakya Huvacha Yatra Asya Purushasya Mrutasya Agnim Vag Apyedi Yajnavalkya, when the vocal organ of a man who dies is merged in fire, it came from fire, it returns to the fire. What is this living human body? A small laboratory. That laboratory has been composed by several factors, chemical, physical factors. We have put together, given it a certain integrity within. At the time of death, this is dismantled. The whole laboratory is dismantled. Each aspect of it go into its own source. We took something from that fire, something from earth, something from air, all that came in and built up the body. Now they return back to their original elements. That is called death. Doesn't mean destruction. Long ago we discovered this truth. Death doesn't mean destruction. Death means going back to the cause. That's all death means. There's no real destruction. Nothing is destroyed in the world. It changes aspects. Things go back to their own causes, take new shape when an ornament is beaten and beaten, made a pulp. What has happened? It has gone back to its cause, the gold, that's all. Then you can make another shape out of it also. So death or destruction doesn't mean real destruction, going back to the cause only. So this body is composed of many, many elements in various shapes and forms that being dismantled now and they go back to the cause through the agency of fire. We burn away the body so that whatever elements are there will go back to their own original elements. When the vocal organ of man who dies is merged in the fire, the nose in the air, it came from air, it goes back there. Similarly, the mind, the eye in the sun, eye is a product of sun, sun's solar energy. The mind, the moon, ear in the quarters, the body in the earth, the ether of the heart in the external ether, the hair on the body in the herbs, that on the head in the trees, and the blood and the seed are deposited in water. Where is then the man? If complete dis dismantling has been done, what has happened to that man? Was he merely a conglomeration of all this? Was there something else? That is the main, main question. The difference between materialism and non-materialism is centered in this one question. Is man only this or is something more? That is the question. Give me your hand, says Yajamarkya at this stage. When this question is put in this form, see the Sanskrit. Yes. Ahara Somya, Hastam Arthabhaga, shaking hands, you know. Yes, take the hand. Come, Arthabhaga, come with me, he said. Why? Avam, Edasya, Vedashyamaha. We shall discuss this subject between ourselves. Not meant to go be in the marketplace. This discussion is too profound. He said, please come, holding the hand like this. Hmm? Give me your hand, dear Arthur Bhada. We will decide this between ourselves. We cannot do it in a crowd, he said. So they went out and talked it over. What they mentioned there was only work, karma, karma and karma phala there. And what they praised there was also work only. Therefore, one indeed becomes good through good work and evil through evil work. Thereupon, Arthabhaga of the line of Jaratkaru kept silent. His questioning is over up to that only. There, Shangara comments a little bit. Of the Grahas and Atikrahas. That's called liberation. All these Grahas and Atik tension creating trouble, they become dissolved. Here itself, like the extinction of a light. The light is burning, you burn it. You just snuff it out. Finished. It's over. So also, it is to ascertain the nature of the stimulating cause of that death, which consists in the bondage called grahas and adhikrahas, that this paragraph is introduced. Yajnavalkya said he with this question. Then here comes the question, and then finally they went out and talked it together. There, Jengara says, "What is this subject? Karma, karma, karma." There is no other answer to this question. The answer is being given. 
Shankara's commentary. Exponents of different schools have put forward different things. For example, nature, prakriti, chance, time, work, destiny, mere consciousness and the void, shunya, the void, as a support in question. So many philosophers have put forward so many suggestions on this question. Therefore, being open to various disputes, the truth cannot be ascertained by the usual method of defeating the opponent. That's not enough. If you want to know the truth in this matter, give me your hand, dear Arthur Bhaga. We, shall, we will decide this question that you have asked between ourselves. Why? Because we cannot decide it in a crowd and we must retire to a solitary place to discuss it, he said. They went out. That is, what Yajimalkya and Arthur Bhaga did after retiring to the solit solitary place is being stated. They went out of the crowded place and talked it over. First they took up one, after another, the different conventional views on the subject and discussed them. Listen what they mentioned in the end of the discussion after refuting all tentative views. There they mentioned only work as the support which caused the repeated taking of the body and the organs. Our karma phala, samskara, vasana, they constitute the impulse for repeated reincarnation with new bodies, new grahas, new adhikrahas. Not only this, having accepted time, work, destiny and God as causes, what they praised there was also only work, 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 karma phala, karma phala. Remember, throughout the Indian thinking, there is no place for the devil, whereas in every other religion, without the devil, there is no religion. Here, because we discovered the karma, no place for the devil at all. There is no need for the devil. Whereas in Christianity, of course, the way it is preached, it is full of devil. Now only a change is coming. When that change comes, when you banish the devil, what else will you put there? Only this karma theory will come in. Karma will also include reincarnation, rebirth. Karma and reincarnation constitute a tremendous source of strength for Indian thinking. This is responsibility is put on human being itself, not some external agency. I am responsible for this. I am responsible for that as well. Though we banish devil once for all from the time of the Upanishads up to date. Whereas in all Western thinking up to date, constantly the devil raises the head. Without the devil, we can't preach religion. Very often they preach devil more than God himself in religion. Fear of the devil, fear of the devil always is there. In England, you will find in the 19th century, so much pressure, the devil pressure. Oh, you are doing wrong. Oh, the devil is on you. Devil is on you. Devil has possessed you, etc., etc. Constantly. We don't have any such devil. You are karma. You have done this. That is impelling you in this direction. You can impel you in another direction also. Karma can be either good or bad. Good, we get through good karma. Bad, we get through bad karma. So karma, karma, they discussed, came back with that wonderful question. and. Atha Bhaga had no more to question, so far as Ajimal is concerned. That is the section 2, which we completed today. Next is 3 and 4 sections, where the question becomes deeper and deeper. And some of the profound statements of the Upanishads you will get in these sections. We shall take up this next Sunday, when we meet here. Only last week, we were studying this reference to graha and atigraha, sense organs, sense objects. The whole of experience is divided into sense organs on the one side, sense objects on the other. The same nature evolves in